he and his teammates are one day removed from a wild emotional game against an NFC East foe and now they are just three days away from the next one. DY has the lowdown on the loss to Philly. We will look ahead to the Giants tonight on After the Game with Darrell Young. Live from News Channel 8, this is After the Game with Darrell Young. Normally, D.Y. would be right here with me on set, but because of the short week, the team just finished a rare Monday practice. So D.Y. joins me tonight from Redskins Park via microwave truck. D.Y., how are you? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm good. I see you. Um, last week you told me as long as you keep scoring touchdowns, you're not going to shave the beard. I see the beard is still intact. That is correct. That is correct. It still is intact. I'm trying to let it grow a little bit. <laughs> Did you ever think you would score the first touchdown in the first three games for the Washington Redskins this season? No, I, you know, I, uh, you know, it's always a dream. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. But, uh, you know, I, you know, a coach has called my number a couple times in the red zone, so I'm just trying to make it happen for the team. Uh, D.Y., uh, we all watched that football game. It was physical. It was um, taut with emotion. It was everything you want a football game to be except for the fact that you guys didn't win. How hard is it to go back to work today and go practice some 24 hours after walking off that field in Philly yesterday? It's frustrating, but you know, it's, you, uh, you have to have a short memory with this game. You know, we, uh, we did some good things coming out of the game. You know, we weren't able to run the ball like we do, but we did some good things in the passing game. And, uh, you know, hopefully it'll back some teams up now. I mean, Philly had nine guys in the box at one time. So, um, you know, you look at what they did. They did a, it's credit to them. You know, they, was a very good, they were a very good football team. Uh, they put themselves in a position, you know, where they were successful. But, you know, the good thing is we get to play them twice. And, um, you know, looking forward to this week, we just have to, you know, have a short-term memory in terms of what happened, uh, learn from our mistakes and know what, you know, what, know what the opponent's going to do and uh, just go forward from there and just try to you know be the best we can be. D.Y., did guys have at the practice or walk through about an hour or so ago, did guys have energy? What, what, was, what was it like inside the bubble? We did have energy because we know we did some good things, you know, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like you said, stats, stats don't mean anything. You know, they just uh, outscored us at the end of the game. So we just got to be better in that aspect. But uh, we did some good things. We, t we could take some positive things away from the game. We just have to, uh, you know, eliminate the kickoff return. We have to eliminate, you know, the interception. We have to eliminate some of the penalties we had. So, uh, you know, put ourselves in a better situation, you know, looking forward to this week. D.Y., that game, I've had Redskins fans tell me, some of them called the show last night. Uh, I've had folks tell me, and they're Redskins fans, Man, what a great game that was. That was an awesome game. I don't remember Redskins fans ever saying that about a loss. You don't do moral victories, correct? That, that doesn't happen, correct? Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's simple. No, moral victories, you know, they don't, they don't happen. Of course, you want them to happen as a player just to kind of say, you know, what did I do good walking away from the game? But at the end of the day, you know, you're judged on wins and losses. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I looked at Roy Hallou in the fourth quarter at one point and said, hey, you know, this is a really good football game, man. I can't remember the last time we were in a game like this. But, uh, you know, like you said, we just uh, we have some positive things coming out of that game. We know what we need to do. Uh, what was it like to be a part of it? Because you just said it. I can't remember the last Redskins game that A meant a lot because last year at 3 and 13, the last eight games didn't mean much. That meant that much and had that much sort of personality about it, had that much verve. What was it like to be out there yesterday? It was really fun, you know, being in a divisional game. That's what you get all the time. Uh, those games, you know, you, uh, you put yourself in a situation where, you know, you just try to get down to the last couple of minutes. We all know that Philadelphia is a second half team. You know, they play really well. They maintain the first half. In the second half, you know, they usually, you know, wear out their opponents and, you know, kind of take over sort of like what they did, you know, to uh, Jacksonville and then uh, coming back versus uh, Indy on Monday night. So, you know, looking at what they did, you know, uh, it was really fun. You know, something that, you know, we expect from all divisional games and all games in the NFL. You know, uh, I can't remember how many games we were in last year or the you know, year before that were decided by three or less points so you now you're looking at that you know it's just uh, or seven or less points excuse me you know looking at that you know, the NFL is about you know not just it's about one play but uh, you know you got to look at it through the course of a game and see what you did and you know try to eliminate some of the things that you did early on to put yourself in a situation not to win uh, folks if you want to weigh in 703-387-1020 that is our lawn and leisure hotline if you want to talk with myself more importantly Terrell Young about the game yesterday and looking forward uh, as the Giants come here Thursday night. D.Y., the hit uh, from your boy Chris Baker uh, yesterday on Nick Foles. If there was one sort of iconic image, lasting image from the football game, it's that hit. Uh, what would you make of the hit and the penalty? 
Um, I honestly didn't even see the hit. I just, you know, seen him and Jason Peters fighting. And, uh, you know, you look at that and you just say, hey, man, you got one of your teammates out there. Now, I thought he tried to make a football play. I mean, I understand it's a quarterback, too. So, you know, they're trying to eliminate that from the game, too. But for what I thought I seen, I thought I seen him just, you know, throw an elbow out there and just try to make a good block for Breland, who, you know, who had an interception. But, uh, you know, they said they don't want that in the game. So, you know, we all have to pay our consequences. And, you know, we were just all trying to be there for him and just try to support him. And, you know, he's what Baker's a good guy. He's not one of those dirty players. He's not a guy that you, you know, you'll look at and say, uh, you know, he's he's. Uh, one of those guys in the league that you look at and say that he's uh, just a guy that <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I don't even look at Baker like that. That's why I'm speechless. You know, he's just one of those guys that calls himself swaggy. He uh, always has a good time. He's always dancing and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, they, they call the penalty. It is what it is. It, it is what it is. We got to live with it. You know, hopefully he's not suspended or anything like that. So we'll just go forward with things and look forward to Thursday and uh, being D out there. D.Y., that prompted, of course, the brawl. Uh, which, again, it was fun to watch. Of course, we're not in it. It's always amusing to me when guys are punching other guys and the other guys have helmets on. Where were you in the brawl? <laughs> uh, just trying to break up some of my teammates. You know, I just, uh, we, we don't need to lose any guys with stuff like that. You know, it's God forbid we already had enough injuries going on. Then guys get kicked out of the game. You know, you don't ever want to put yourself in a situation where, you know, you, you looked at as like that, uh, looked at as, as a team like that, and the referees, you know, throw a flag for anything that you do or say. So uh, it's good to see that we all had each other's backs. That's a positive thing coming out of it. But, you know, hopefully, you know, any no guys do any punches and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, I was just trying to separate some guys. <laughs> uh, D.Y., you and I have talked before, sometimes off air, about you wanting this team, whether it be this year or other years, to even become more of a team that's sort of intangible that you, you know it when you see it. Yesterday, it, it felt from afar to me like this team, even in a loss, grew up a little bit and became more of a team. Did it feel that way to you? I did. I did feel that way. You know, you uh, look at some of the close games. It sucks. You could say that that we didn't because you know we lost the game. But looking forward to things. I mean, 511 yards of total offense is pretty good. You know, I don't care. You know what type of offense you're in. And uh, like I said, we just got to do more in terms of you know getting rid of those field goals, eliminating those, and making those seven points or six points or whatever it is. You know, and just. Uh, you know, kind of, you know, getting the, run, getting the running game established a little bit more. You know, we, uh, like I said, we, I think we'll back some defenders up now. I thought Deshaun did a great job of coming in there. Pierre did a great job. Now Niles Paul stepping up for a third week in a row, a second week in a row, and doing a really good job. And, uh, you know, it just, it's about the next guy up, you know. So everyone has to keep playing a role. And I think, I think eight receivers touched the ball yesterday, so that's pretty good. 703-387-1020 uh, is our lawn and leisure hotline. Tina is in Oxon Hill tonight. Tina is on line four. Good evening, Tina. How are you? Yeah, good evening, guys. How are both of you doing tonight? Uh, good. Oh, that doing game well. was Thank good. <laughs> yes, it Thank was so you. good last night. It was entertaining and like a horror movie at the same time because you all was beating them and beating them. Nick Foles just rose up like a zombie. Then my baby got hurt, D'Angelo Hall. I hope he get better. I don't want this to be a career ending for him. That's my baby. I'm wearing black tomorrow. They ridiculed me so bad. My coworkers are Dallas and Philly fans. He, they was, they was just gonna, I'm, wearing, I'm just going to be a lady in black tomorrow. But I have to move on now. But I'm just devastated. Okay, I'm Tina. so hurt. And will he come back next season? Uh, Tina, thank you in Oxon Hill. Uh, D.Y., uh, we got to do a break. She brought up D. Hall. The sort of breaking news from Redskins Park today is that D'Angelo Hall is out for the year. D.Y. and I will talk about that uh, and the other folks on a long laundry list of Redskins injuries heading into Thursday after the break. Uh, callers, please take note. All callers to get through on the Lawn and Leisure Hotline will be entered into our big green egg contest. The winner will be drawn in December. They will win, you guessed it, a big green egg for complete rules of the contest. Please log on to WJLA.com slash big green egg. Redskins with a lot of injuries coming out of Philly. Here's the injury report brought to you by the Cochran Law Firm. Uh, terrible news for D. Hall. Yesterday's assumption was confirmed today. D. Hall is out for the season with a ruptured Achilles. Another blow to the secondary. New safety Duke Iannaccio 
out for the season as well. Broken bone in his foot. Jason Hatcher left the game with a strained hamstring. He returned. He is now day today. Brian Arakpo left the game and returned as well. Injured his right middle finger. Arakpo apparently said the finger and the hand were pointing in different directions. That's why I don't play football. And offensive lineman Sean Laval left the game after injuring his knee. Not known when he will be back. Here's Arakpo earlier today kind of summing up Summing up what we've always suspected about football. Football is a tough game, man. If, if you ain't, look, if you got kids and you ain't, you know, you can't stand withstand injuries and you don't want, don't, don't, don't let them play football because this game is tough. You, we lose guys left and right, and this goes along with around the whole league. And we lost a leader in our locker room and D'Angelo and what he brings to the table, and one of my dear friends. Uh, since I've been here, so um, you know it, it, it's very unfortunate. I'm very sad, but somebody on step up. Brian Arakpo earlier today. Uh, Dy joins us now after the game with Terrell Young. Uh, Dy, Brian's bite there, his sound bite. Football is a rough game. Uh, how do you sort of reconcile that your next play could be your last, either for that game or that season, or dare I say, forever? Uh, you know, you, you try not to go into a situation thinking about, you know, your last play, but you have to think about it at the same time, meaning in terms of effort and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, you never want to go on the field and say, hey, you know, I'm just trying not to get hurt or anything like that. You can't think about it. Put yourself in a situation in the offseason, lifting, running, uh, eating right, you know, doing all the little things, stretching uh, to kind of prevent those things. But, you know, some things are very unfortunate, but all you can do is pray about it and wish the best. Uh, D.Y., D. Hall, D'Angelo Hall, one of those core guys. Really good cover corner, a locker room guy, a leader, a vocal leader. Uh, what are you guys, what are you going to miss the most about, uh, about D. Hall? He's a captain. He's one of those guys that expresses himself. You know as well as I do, he's always going to speak his mind, and that's what you respect about a guy like that. Uh, you know, everyone thinks D'Angelo Hall is like 36, 37, but he's only 30, you know, because he's been around the game so long. He's made so many plays and done so many things. And, uh, you know, I walked over to him on the sideline yesterday, and I asked him, you know, what happened. He said, you know, it's just my Achilles, man. I said, oh, man, you can't tell me that, you know. Uh, you know, I'm always going to pray for you because you're one of those guys that, you know, have worked so hard. You know, even being a high-round pick, you know, people kind of questioned you, you know, as you were getting a little bit older in terms of the football. And uh, you proved us all, you proved the world wrong again last year, you know, getting another contract from the Redskins. So I think, uh, you know, we're losing a captain, we're losing a leader, but I know he'll be around and he'll definitely still be vocal and still be out there yelling at guys the same way as if he, as if he was out there with us on the field. Uh, D'Angelo spoke today uh, out the back door there at Redskins Park. Uh, and was in good spirits, uh, good spirits, given his situation. Let's hear from D. Hall. Because I've had so many coaches, you know, the owner, uh, Bruce, everybody's kind of consoling me like I'm, you know, like I'm dying. I'm like, look, y'all, I'm not on suicide watch. I'll be all right. You know, I'll be all right. So, you know, like I said, man, it could have been a whole lot worse. I'm hearing Achilles aren't the end of the world. So, and even if it is, you know, it is what it is. But. You know, I feel good about it. I'm optimistic, so I'm just ready to get to work. D. Hall earlier today, uh, out for the season, ruptured Achilles. Said he's talked to Kobe Bryant. He talked to Kobe Bryant yesterday at the airport uh, via the phone, obviously, about Kobe's experience with the Achilles. There you see the numbers with D. Hall. As D. Y., D -Y as you mentioned, there's so much more to this guy than just sort of the tangible numbers and cover skills. Yeah, he's, uh, like you said, we voted him captain for a reason. Uh, for him to just, you know, be in a situation that he's in, like I said, I think he's going to year nine or year 10. But uh, to be a first round pick, to still come out here every day, practice hard, play hard, be voted, you know, by his peers as a captain, uh, says a lot about who he is. And, you know, he's one of those guys who's a family man, likes to relax in his off time, plays a little PlayStation, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I came in here today and he's still talking like he's still playing and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, you know, you can't talk to people like that. You can't run or anything. You know, I can physically abuse you right now. But, uh, no, He's doing well, though. You know, he's, uh, he's in good spirits, and you know, he'll definitely be missed by this rescue organization for this uh, season. 703-387-1020 is our lawn and leisure hotline. Tony is in Southwest D.C. tonight on line three. Hi, Tony. What's up? Hey, what's up, Peter? What's hey, going on, Tony? Hey, what's up? I got a question, man. Why, you, need to, you need to tell the coach to give you the ball more often, man. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I just want to, I mean, I just want to say, man, we're doing a great job, and I think we're going at least to, we're going at least a couple of games from the Super Bowl this time. What you think? Okay, Tony in Southwest. D.Y., Tony wants you to get the ball more. 
I appreciate that. I hope just tell him to, uh, you know, send Jay Gruden an email or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. You know, whenever my number's called, that's what I got. You know, I'm, I'm here for it. But as of right now, I'm a team player. Uh, I just want to put this team in the best situation. My role is blocking and being a special team guy. If, you know, they call upon me to be in the passing game, then that's what I want to do. One of these games, these uh, other teams are going to game plan and say, we got to stop 36 in the red zone. <laughs> They'll be game planning against D.Y. Uh, Bob and Gaithersburg stand the line. We will try to get to you after the break. And I want to ask you, D.Y., it seemed to me and a lot of Redskins fans that the offense is more efficient. It clicks better with Cousins back there. We saw it yesterday. I want your thoughts on that after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to After the Game with Terrell Young. Uh, D.Y., Kirk Cousins, the numbers yesterday were off the charts. I think it's 30 of 48, no sacks, three TDs, one pick. What did you think of your quarterback yesterday? <laughs> I thought he uh, came in and did a very good job of what the coach, you know, for what the coaches asked him to do. Uh, I thought he controlled the game really well, you know, put us in a situation to win the game. Uh, knowing Kirk, you know, he prepares like a starter, so I wasn't surprised that he came in and played the way that he did. And uh, I'm excited, looking forward to where things can go with this offense. Uh, D.Y., this is sort of delicate, and, and you're in Redskins Park, and we know how this works, and it's Robert's football team and, and all of that. A lot of folks think that the offense is better doesn't mean that Kirk Cousins is better. A lot of folks think the offense is better with Kirk running it. Is that what you've experienced? Uh, what do you tell those folks? I can't say that. Robert played one game. You know, I, I, no season is defined by one game in terms of, you know, the first game of the year. So I think, uh, you know, looking at that, though, Robert started playing really well. I thought Kirk, Kirk played really well. So I thought they've been, you know, really, they, they both played really well in this offense. And looking back to the preseason, if that's what people are, you know, judging off of, uh, we didn't have a game plan going to those games, you know. So everyone's out there just kind of freestyling things. And I think uh, you know, they're, just, they're just two different type of players. And, you know, like I said, we can win with both of them. We have won with both of them. So, you know, I look forward to, uh, you know, just playing who, who was, whoever's under the center. It's a good problem to have. The Redskins have two quality quarterbacks. Uh, Mike Shanahan, dare I say, maybe knew what he was doing with that fourth round pick a couple years ago. Uh, Bob is in Gaithersburg tonight on our Lawn and Leisure Hotline. Uh, what's up, Bob? Hey, how you doing, Alex? Uh, we're good. What, what do you think? Uh, D.Y., congratulations. And, uh, Thank you. Cousins is our future quarterback. He runs Gruden's offense more smoothly. And... Um, I'm very, very proud of him, and he'll get better in the fourth quarter with experience. Our specialty teams let us down, and the field goal, obviously, and our defense, God bless them, they tried hard, but uh, we need to sack that quarterback more. But um, I'm proud of my Redskins. I'm sticking with 11-5 and five still. I, I think they're a tough Ball club. I, I really love him. Cool. Hey, Bobby Gaithersburg, thank you so much. D.Y., he's got you guys going 11 and 5. No pressure, D.Y. I love it. <laughs> uh, we got to do a break. If you want to try to weigh in, give us a call quickly. 703 387 1020. That is our lawn and leisure hotline. More with Darrell Young after this. Don't go away. Every Monday, 7 o'clock, D.Y. is here, or if he can't be here, he's at Redskins Park. Talking after the game with Darrell Young. Please join us next Monday, and thanks so much for being with us uh, this Monday. Uh, D.Y., three days away from the New York football giants. Is a short week a good thing or what? It's a really good thing. I think uh, 
You know, it's a, it, it sucks because, you know, you have to go into a situation where, you know, guys are unhealthy coming out of the game that you just played on a Sunday. But uh, looking forward to things, you get, a, you know, some more extra days in terms of, you know, preparing for the week after, you know, getting ready for a Seattle team. So I think, uh, you know, we, our main objective, to, you know, is to come out of this game two and two. And, uh, you know, with the short week, I think, you know, we, the good thing is that they can't game plan too much. We can't game plan too much. Got to go out there and do some things. And, you know, we kind of have a history knowing each other. That's the good thing about division games. And, you know, I don't think the league could have scheduled anything better for us, you know, than the team that we know. So I think, uh, you know, it's got to look ahead and, you know, try to come out of this game two and two. D.Y., thank you so much for the half hour. I'll see you tomorrow at the park. Uh, folks, I'll be back at 9 o'clock for Toyota Sports Talk. We'll take your calls on the Redskins. Here's what I want to ask folks tonight, D.Y. I'm going to ask him, do you see promise in the Redskins or do you just sort of see predictability like special teams? Here we go again. We'll take calls about that at 9 o'clock. See you all.